and make sure you give me to watch the court. I do this all day every day. is Judge Vonda Bailey. She is your candidate for judge of the 255th District Court. Please bring up Miss Vonda Bailey. <laughs> this TikTok, this Instagram. Now, is this a show? Are these real people? What's the backstory behind these viral videos that we're seeing you in? It is a recreation, reenactment. Um, if you may, of things that I've seen in family court with some of my cases. And people were messaging me and they were like, man, I have all these questions about child support. And I said, I cannot answer all of these questions one by one. So how can I figure out a way to help everybody on a massive scale? One Saturday I was watching couples court and I just got to thinking, I said, there's couple, couples court, divorce court, fraternity court. Why isn't anybody talking about child support? It is the most controversial area of law in my opinion. And so I spoke to my production team and they were like, hey, this is a good idea, let's do it. And there you go, support court with Judge Vonda B. So I'm scrolling through TikTok one day, guys, and I see this particular judge, this authority figure, straight up roasting roasting, sizzling, rotisserieing, is if that's even a word, rotisserieing people <laughs> in her courtroom. I should be, but okay. Well, who's to say you should wait your turn? Are you I, little mad or big mad? I think I'm big mad. Oh, okay. You know, well, you, I, like you know what, you're gonna have to get over it because this is not a therapy court, okay? Right, okay. You're gonna have to get over it. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't need you taunting her, okay? Right. That's not cute. <laughs> All rise. Support court with Judge Vonda B is now in session. Judge, this is case number JVB1016, Marcy Keys. <laughs> My name is Chris Shaw. I'm the husband of Vonda. Uh, we've been together four years now. Just celebrated our four year anniversary. I was just proud that she was doing something that was educational and informative to the people out there because a lot of times people really don't know how to navigate the, uh, the legal system. At first, uh, in all transparency, I did not want to be the bailiff on the show, but she, you know, she asked a couple of times. I said, fine, I'll do it. I'm more so behind the scenes type, type guy. I'm not an actor. I don't try to portray to be an actor, you know, and actually I'm not even acting when I do my lines. I just, <laughs> I just go out there and, you know, and get it over with. But it's really good to, to see the how the show has impacted, uh, you know, the community and the citizens and all of the fans that, you know, continue to support the show. They getting into it. Oh, snap. <laughs> to be honest, the law actually found me. My dad is a retired lieutenant with the sheriff's department. My mom used to be a supervisor in the felony courts. And I just remember as a little girl, always going to court, always being surrounded by judges, attorneys, police officers, and the like and it found me. I mean, Vonda is very, I've been in the room with her with things and even in the courtrooms and she is very good with what she does. I'm now an attorney. Prior to going to law school, I was a probation officer in Dallas County. My mom, my dad, and I actually worked in the same building, Frank Crowley Courthouse. So it was a great experience. You know, we did different job duties related in the justice system, but it was good being able to say that I worked in the same building with my parents. Family law is important to me because, number one, is it is a part of me. I was involved in a child support situation with my son's dad many years ago. And from that experience, I realized the importance of a judge having compassion for the litigants who are involved in those cases, a judge being fair and partial and making sure that they hear both sides of the evidence. So I knew in that moment, that's what I was supposed to be doing. It was my passion and I didn't even realize it. Vonda Bailey is this fun, energetic chick 
from Oak Cliff, Texas, and I am running for family court judge right here from my hometown, Dallas County, because I want to effectuate change in the family court system. Who's the incumbent? Who are you running against? Kim Cooks. Okay. All right, so you've been obviously in a courtroom before and you practiced in a courtroom. Before, yes, before I was on, you know, I was banned from going in there. I can't practice law in that court anymore. In October of 2018, I had a baseless grievance filed against me. A grievance is a complaint that's filed against an attorney and it goes to the State Bar of Texas. That is the agency that regulates attorneys. And it's pretty much telling the State Bar of Texas that this particular attorney does not deserve to have their law license. Kim Cooks did that against me. Why do you think she chose you to try to take your license away? I think she chose me because she looked at me like anybody else that she's ever bullied. Like, oh, Vonda not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna punk her like I punk everybody else. Prior to the grievance, I really didn't have a relationship with Kim Cooks. When she started to run for judge the first time, I was a newly licensed attorney. I supported Kim Cooks. I was one of her biggest fans. I didn't have a reason to think she was nothing other than a good person. <laughs> but boy, was I wrong. The grievance was something that when she brought it to me, I immediately looked over it and the obvious uh, personal nature of it. It wasn't about professional ethics or anything like that. It was really about a vendetta against Vonda because of the personality conflict that existed between the, the two of them. It wasn't just that she filed it and it was a lie. It was the timing of in which she filed it. It was a horrible experience. I was pregnant with my daughter. I literally pulled the grievance out of the mail at the same time I found out I was pregnant with my daughter. It caused me so much stress. And as a mother, any woman can relate to the stresses that already come with a pregnancy. Morning sickness, emotions up and down, weight gain, weight loss, affected heartbeat for the baby. You add stress on top of that for something that was completely fabricated. It just adds to the stress. She was very bothered and she was very afraid of why she was doing that to her. I've seen judges sanction an attorney, you know, hold them in contempt, you know, for whatever may have occurred or the judge felt that the attorney did, but that's either a, a fine or something. Uh, contempt can also lead to imprisonment for the attorney, but I've never in 26 years saw a judge file a grievance against a lawyer. I showed up for an investigative hearing in November of 2019, and by the grace of God, the panel of the State Board of Texas saw right through the fabrication and they dismissed the complaint on his face in its entirety. My law license, that little gold bar card, I paid $178,000 for it and I'm not gonna allow anybody to take it away from me. Yes, $178,000. I, I don't have it anymore, I paid it off. But yeah, I did. The grievance was filed against me in October of 2018 I received notice of it in November of 2018. Just a few short months later, nothing going on between Kim Cooks and I. January the 25th of 2019, she filed an order with the courts, pretty much saying that any case that landed in her court would be moved to another court. It's called a standing voluntary recusal. A recusal is a judge saying that they are declining to hear any cases from this particular attorney. Personally, it hurts, you know, especially when you haven't done anything wrong. But on a professional side, it hurts my clients. Because if I have a situation where the parties are experiencing family violence, let's say that, and I need a protective order, and it lands in that court, 
I have to wait until it moves. Um, I went to court initially in 2019 for a modification of our divorce decree. So the modification was for visitation and child support. I landed in court number 255, that's Judge Kim Cook's court. I hired Vonda Bailey to come on to my case. When Vonda came on to my case, I didn't know that she had um, some kind of clause where Kim Cook, Judge Kim Cook, had forbid her to practice in her court. She signed some type of document saying that if any case ends up in her court that Vonda is the lead attorney on, it automatically gets reassigned. Before May of 2020, I began dating Judge Cook's ex, the father of her child. And the case got reassigned because it was part of the process, the automatic process. Judge Cooks went and pulled my case back. Now, keep in mind that Vonda had other cases that have come through Kim's court that she did not pull back and that automatically got reassigned. But on my case, she actually went back, Judge Cooks, and pulled my case back from the 330th court to pull it, bring it back to her court. So at this point, we're like, you can't be serious. What ethical judge would do something like that? And so all the shenanigans that occurred, little by little by little, built up to where she was so frustrated, she said, you know what, I, I'm gonna run. Vonda was like, Mom, I'm going to run against her. Because, see, people used to say, it's Vonda all the time. Are you going to run for judge? But I'm like, I ain't running for no judge. I don't want to be no judge. To that, Vonda had no intentions on running. But when you poke the bear enough and the bear wakes up, the bear's probably not going to be in a good mood. She said, I think God is putting this on my mind. I need to do something. I said, well, Vonda, whatever you do, I said, I support you because I think that's not fair how she did you. Uh, I think just the circumstances surrounding, you know, some of the things that were going on with some uh, other individuals that are part of the legal uh, community kind of just lit that, ignited that, 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 that flame for her to say, you know what, in order for me to, in, effect the kind of change that needs to happen in Dallas County, I need to run for office. And that's exactly what she did. I believe it was, was it Mike Tyson that said, you know, what What was the saying he said about getting punched in the mouth? Everybody think they can fight until they get punched in the yeah. mouth. Yeah, yeah. And that's essentially what has happened to her now because she didn't see me coming. She literally was like going to go free. Like I said, no opponent had I not gotten in the race. She was just going to walk right into that seat for a third turn. So, now. I think people don't really have direction a lot of times in what it is they want to do, which is why sometimes their campaign or starting a law practice may be all over the place at first, right? because you have to make sure that you brand. That's a big thing. It plays a major role in campaigning and starting a business. You have to be able to brand yourself. And whatever that brand is, you gotta stay true to it. You can't start doing what everybody else is doing because then it's, you start looking like somebody else. You start looking real unfamiliar. I just think that if people stay true to themselves and be themselves, whatever that looks like, you know, if you're a friendly, outgoing, charismatic person, that should be able to spill over into your campaign. That should be able to spill into what you're doing as a business owner, because those are the things that's gonna make you unique and make people attracted to you. Good morning. I just, listen, this whole campaign thing, it be having me so busy. So busy. The campaign trail is fun. Had I known it was this much fun, I probably would have done it a long time ago when I was eligible to run for judge. I absolutely love meeting people. I love people. I don't believe I meet a stranger ever because I feel like even the person that has the worst attitude and that's having the worst of the worst days, I can make their day a little brighter just by being who I am. 
I was supportive. I said, okay, well, so what's the game plan? How are we gonna make sure that you secure the, you know, this, this seat, this bench? And so we started talking about that, brainstorming and whatnot. She put together a well thought out plan, very strategic in how she wanted to market herself and her campaign and her goals and whatnot. And she, she saw it every step of the way. And so through the years, I've learned about campaigns. And I advised her that um, in, in martial arts, uh, there was a, um, a samurai who said that when he got ready to go into battle with his opponent, his opponent was already dead. When he went into the match, it was just a matter of going through the motions. And so I gave that concept to her. I said, you have to do the work up front so that on election day, that's just a formality. The race is already won. And she took that approach and started doing the things that she needed to do. You know, it's extremely important that in this era that we're doing more to show people how things should look. We're, it's, it's time out for the traditional stuff. It's time out for the campaigns where we just see people like this, right? And they're saying vote for me with an American flag behind them. It's time out for that. It's time for people to be more innovative. It's time for people to do the things that people really want to see. They don't just want to see you out in the community taking a picture and just saying I'm present. They actually want to see you spearheading events and organizations, bringing people together to make sure that whatever resources needed that are needed in the community, you're being a part of it. So I don't know if we actually said where we're at. We're at um, the DeSoto Holiday Parade in DeSoto, Texas. We are actually in the parking lot of Tom Thumb that's right across the street from where DeSoto City Hall and everything like that sits. The parade is going to be coming from DC3 Church. So we're just passing our flyers and you know, Letting people know that we're out here, which they getting already out know. Here, we're out getting here. people out here to vote, okay? Very yep. important to vote. Yep. Yeah. Well, Valentine's Day is early voting, so show me some love. Okay. <laughs> oh, it is cold up in here. It is. My two year old lock changed. She, she got a lot of energy. Oh, what you doing? Ah, that means the street's still blocked off. Like you know. <laughs> It's right. nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you as well. Yes, Sam. I appreciate you. <laughs> These people emotion so high. I'm just out here to win. I ain't about no drama. I don't care about that. <laughs> I mean, they emotion so high. Hey, mama. Good to see you. I, I feel like a winner. How you feel? I hope so. <laughs> All I gotta say, vote for the best and get the rest. That's right. Bonda Bailey, Bonda Bailey, that's me, Bonda Bailey. Yeah, make sure you give me a watch yes. court. I do this all day, every day. And you said that you never got Hey, baby. Cute. Oh, we late, Aria. Come on. Congratulations already, honey. You already won, honey. Victory is yours. Let's get the celebration started. We here celebrating my, my friend, definitely coming out to support the campaign. We are looking forward to winning this election and, and seeing great things in our in our county. So definitely make sure you support Ronda Bailey for Judge 254. The only choice. That's right, the only. Vote Vonda. So again, thank you all for coming. If you live in Dallas County and have not already signed my petition, make sure you sign my petition. You can obviously leave a donation because that's what this is about. Right? So yeah, you can leave a donation in any amount. It is all appreciated and I can assure you that it all counts for something. So again, thank you all for being here. We're going to have fun and win this election. Right? You know, some weird things 
take place on the campaign trail, okay? So every day that I went to feed my chickens during early voting, and sometime my mom and my son did, we always counted the chickens. It was just a habit. There was no lock on the coop. Didn't think we needed one. We live in the country. We pretty much know all our neighbors. Didn't think we needed one, right? I go and feed the chickens. Well, I noticed, I was like, man, where is everybody? This couldn't be everybody. So I look inside the coop where they actually sleep at night. No one was in there. So I got to counting them. And I was like, okay, it's only 17. We had, to, we started out with 22. Three of the 22 were roosters. So we got rid of two of the roosters, okay? So that put us down to 20. Well, this day I went to check, it was only 17. And my initial thought was the tarp on the top of it was kind of um, like the little zip ties that were on it were broken. So I was thinking, man, maybe a hawk or something flew down there. Well, one thing I know about raising chickens with wild animals, if a wild animal ever attacks your chicken coop, you will know because there would be feathers everywhere, right? That's how a wild animal kind of lets you know that they've been inside your chicken coop. These chickens and hen literally disappeared, they vanished in thin air. So I would only believe that a person removed them out of there and it would have been perfect to do it between early voting and the election because I really wasn't home for 10 to 12 hours during the day. So yeah, one day I went to like an early lunch with my mentee. We were downtown and I tried to get on my YouTube channel to show it to her because she asked about support court. Well, it was a picture of a dog holding a cord in his mouth with the plug at the end, like some has been unplugged. So I didn't think nothing of it. I'm thinking maybe we didn't have reception. I get to my next destination, meeting up with my cousin, still unplugged. Well, I go and check my email and it says, we've taken your page down because you've had too many violations of community standards. So of course I immediately appeal it because in my mind, if I violated standards up until now, it's been three years since support court has been up, you would have notified me well before then. Now mind you, this is during the campaign too. Five days later, I'm at an event, get a notification that an unrecognized device has logged in or attempted to log in to my Facebook. So I'm clicking on the button. It only goes so far on your phone. So I reach out to a friend of mine that works with social media networks. And I said, hey, how can I trace to see, you know, what's this unrecognizable device? And they pretty much told me I had to track the IP address, but I had to do it from a laptop. So when I got home, I literally became an expert on how people hack other people's stuff. I got on my computer pulled up my login history, found the IP address, copied and pasted the IP address into another website, which pulls up then the coordinates of exactly where the person tried to log in to my Facebook account. I was able to not only look up the person's phone number, found it, but also do the tracing back to the coordinates and the coordinates pulled up to George Allen Court Building which is where the family courts are housed. And that's where you're gonna leave it? Yep. Okay. So I'm out here at Disciple Central Community Church in DeSoto. It's also known as DC3. This is one of the polling locations. It's very popular. So I'm just getting my other poll workers ready. As soon as they get here, then I'm going to pass the torch on to them and move to another location. I'm trying to get to about three or four of them today. Oh, I feel good. Oh, number one on the ballot, Bonda is going to win. God gave me the assignment. I understood it. All I gotta do is execute it. The citizens of DeSoto, we are tired of people sitting on the bench taking our money. We are holding you accountable. We're looking for ethics and integrity. And that's why I'm voting for Vonda Bailey. So I absolutely enjoy the campaign trail. I have bumped into Kim Cooks a number of times. She sees me, she leaves.
and I'm here to support my sister Vonda, working the voting post for her. I actually live in Austin, me and my family, and so I am here today and tomorrow missing work and she's missing school just to come here and make sure people are voting and they vote correctly, vote for Vonda. From the day she was born, we always knew something was special about her. It would be something. We don't know, but now we do. So when she became an attorney, we were all excited. I think I cried for three days because I was so excited for her. But now that she's running for judge, it puts a different light on in my life and our whole family life because I think Vonda would make a great judge. I think she's compassionate, she's fair, and very honest. If you ever want somebody to tell you the truth about anything, don't call Vonda because she will tell you the truth. Your feelings will be hurt. You'll probably be crying driving down the street, but that's just who she is. She's a sweetheart. She loves people. Me and her have two things in common. One, we talk a lot, and two, we talk to anybody. We don't care who it is. We'll talk to anybody. It's a packed show and we've got a lot to get to. Live from downtown Dallas, it's election night on WFAA News at 10. With the, when those early votes came in and she was up by 10,000, I knew that that was a wrap. I said, that's early voting. There's no way that she can catch that up on voting day. It's a wrap. Yeah, people she keep only texting won me. By, yeah, it's a wrap. There's she no, she, she only won by 1,500 votes the last night. She would need a miracle to win. Ain't no miracle. She gonna need a miracle for real, for real. She gonna need a miracle. For real, for real. Need a miracle. I have won in person early voting as well as the election day votes that have come in as well. Thank you, thank you. As well as the early voting mail in ballots. I thank y'all so much. And we just met on the campaign trail. Thank y'all. I love y'all. I hate that I cried. I said I wasn't going to cry. But when I talk about Austin, that breaks me down. Because Austin reminds me constantly of where I used to be. I was a single mother on welfare in law school. But God. <laughs> but God. When Vonda came out of school and she passed that bar, she came out running. She had billboard signs, she had commercials. If you got drama, call my mama. She had everything. And, um, you know, she just really believes in the people of her community and she was born and raised here. She's a Dallas native. So this bench is for her, it's been for her. I don't believe the judge, when you walk in the courtroom, should be daunting. The courtroom itself is, a, nobody wants to be there, right? Nobody wants to be there. So you have to make sure that you're treating people with grace, respect, right? People just want to be heard. And when you hear their cases and hear about what it is that they have to do, then you make the decision according to what the law says and the facts have provided. When I think about a court, I think about a resource for the people. And that's really what your court should be. They're, they're not only there for the application of law and for justice and those things like that. There are people that really need help. And who better to serve them than the people that are going to be fairly, right, applying the law. We know the law. So we should be able to provide people with different resources that are gonna help them through whatever their life's journey is gonna look like. And ultimately that's my goal. Everybody that comes in my courtroom, I know they're gonna make mistakes. I know they're gonna mess up. I know they're gonna say dumb things. They're gonna do dumb things. I mean, I've said and done dumb things, right? We all are similar in that sense. My goal is to, number one, make sure you're better off leaving me than when you came in and to make sure you're, I've done something or provided some sort of resource in my courtroom that will equip you to be a better person. That's what life is all about. You wanna make sure that people are going to be okay beyond you. And I believe I'm in the right position to do that as judge. But the one thing about Fonda that I can say that truly, truly, truly showed her integrity for me and that made me believe that she was a godsend 
was when she said to me, sis, don't you worry about paying me. Mind you, I didn't know Vonda before she came on my case. She could have made a fortune off of me, right? She could have very well nickel and dimed me. She had a right to, but her integrity spoke volumes. Well, she's one of the hardest working that I know. Uh, she definitely is on top of her, her craft. She studies it. She's well knowledgeable about this, the subject matter uh, in, in family law. Uh, she's very zealous in, in her representation of her clients. Uh, she didn't get the, the, the nickname Pitbull in the skirt for, for, for no reason. An election is grueling. It's very grueling. And I put out the signs, but you know, a mom took care of the kids and did a lot of other things, which she tell you about that. But I was glad that it was over. I was proud of the fact that she won because she put in the work. You have to put in the work in order to be successful. And she took that approach of that samurai. She went out and she slayed her opponent. So when the day of election, it was formality. In the meantime, don't waste my time. And don't be sorry, just don't do it. anybody that's going to know that Bond is on the bench, they're going to be able to say, oh yes, we're going to be treated fairly. Oh yes, that's Vonda. She, we've known Vonda since she was a kid because I think they know that they can call her out and hold her accountable. And if not, they can go to her mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, and they can always, always, <laughs> they can always go to Cynthia Bailey and tell <laughs> Cynthia Bailey what her daughter's doing and get it right. That was good. It's true though. <laughs> Cynthia Bailey will put you in check, she girl. Will. She will. Oh, the shade. Come on, shade. All right, all right. 